Today, we are asking a chef and a normal home cook to put to the test some incredible kitchen gadgets that have been recommended by you. Incredible. Who's- I don't want to lead the discussion. <laughs> I, All I hear I is it's a scale, but we don't know what, is, what the metric is. If they're incredible, I'm not going to get the reaction from him that I want. Some incredibly intriguing <laughs> no. kitchen gadgets. Would you like to lift the cloche well, on number one? Well, now you've teed it up, I'm worried. Oh, there's one each. <laughs> they look like they could um, address an itch. Corn? Well, you wouldn't, and it's too no. firm, and they, this is just plastic. Molded plastic mm -hmm. that is hollow. In water it would fill up, so it's nothing wet. Don't get it wet, but put it in. I think you're right, it's got to go up to something. <laughs> but I don't know what it's going up, and I don't think it's corn. This is the hot dog bun driller. Designed to prevent hot dogs from slipping out from the bun, allowing diners peace of mind when eating. With this simple and easy to use hot dog drilling tool, easily put your hot dog into bread, saving time, effort, without the worry of leakage. You are taking the absolute mickey. Of all the things that we were thinking that this might actually go up into, I wasn't thinking bun. Put it in a bun. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the age old method of just cutting it here or down the side, opening it like a book, slapping your sausage in, and then condiment all over. Yeah, it's but how many powder. times does your sausage slip out, or does your sauces slip out? Right, I'm you going know, for it. It drips down into you, doesn't it? I'm, I'm twisting as I go in, it's a screw, right? Impartial, yeah. be impartial. Oh, I've got to go in the other end as well. No, 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 no. You don't go in the other end. You're I think, defeating the point of the driller. I'll be honest, I think end. our sausage and bread ratios are a bit wrong. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be more. <laughs> I don't want to be here. This is mad! What was happening? <laughs> okay. There you go, they're more my size. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you'll notice is all of your condiments are now inside the hot dog bun. Yeah. As is the sausage. And I could do that if I needed to throw it on my way back to whoever I bought it for. Back from the ball game. Yeah, it's yeah. convenient. Pretend that you had a normal hot dog. Show me how you would bite that. Head turn, there you go. Always, do, always tilt the head rather than the Because product. the condiments become toppings. Yeah, and you don't, and gravity is against you. Now, this hot dog is a sandwich. This is genius. Our bread to sausage to screwing device ratios aren't spot on. I like the principle and the idea that somebody has had to solve a problem that has existed for 100 years that no one's cared about. But they should never have bothered to care. What I will say is I've never eaten a hot dog like this. And this is a far less messy in isolation, but it squished all of my condiments down to the bottom. How much do you think we paid for one hot dog bun driller? $3.99. I don't know what your currency conversion rate looks like, Ebers, but it's actually £3.99. Oh. Ah, so I'm literally a symbol off. Yes. That's about the right price for a piece of plastic that's probably travelled around the world. I just don't know why. Well, boys, do you think this is the top dog or is it just bottom dollar? <laughs> don't use that phrase. Definitely <laughs> bottom dollar. Not going anywhere near my bottom. <laughs> Shall we and nobody on? said that it would. Shall we move on to gadget number two? <laughs> oh, great. I think I got angrier than you did in that one. I've just given up. Cast yeah, my mind, <laughs> cast my mind back to when this used to be a respectable job. <laughs> Excellent. Lift the cloche then. Ergonomically, this has been thought through. This has a very specific use. Thumb. That's a very comfortable grip. I don't know why. What would go in here that you need <gasps> to either pull or twist? Or... It's um knife. Because it goes right the way through about um, de-skewering stuff. So you just cook something in a barbecue with a skewer, and you want to. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, Mike yeah. was right. Uh, oh. This <laughs> is... <laughs> I hate you. This is the Dice Vice Evergrip. And much like Sorted was started by students, this was developed by a chef for chefs. The Evergrip is one of a kind, newly patented ergonomic knife grip that helps to reduce strain and stress in the kitchen whilst also boosting productivity. The Evergrip can help you to prep and use your knives for longer periods of time without fatigue. It's also ideal for people with arthritis or other hand and wrist 
conditions. The moment we looked at it and I held it, it felt very comfortable. It is, yeah. yeah. So I'm guessing over the bolster of the knife, where you would normally hold maybe a finger either side of the bolster of the knife to give you more control. I mean, I've never had a problem, but I guess it's in part... If you're doing loads of stuff in prep. Muscle fatigue, yeah. and if you're RSI. using it for a long time. Let's test it. For hours and hours. How long is this video? <laughs> Right, Ebbers, this was designed for a chef, so you're going to have to pass opinion on it first. Yeah, stand aside, normal. I generally prefer to stand a little side on, claw, and that's how I would chop. Okay. So add this on, and I think, in all honesty, yes, hours and hours and hours of knife, veg, fruit prep in a kitchen, this might help. The Evergrip was created by a 15-year restaurant owner and chef, Juan, uh, for himself and for his employees, and they've been using it for years. It started as a rubber hold, but it's been developed into a new patented technology that impressive. helps cooks of all Still. kinds, makes their jobs easier and more efficient. Because so much knife work is about muscle memory and getting used to stuff, I thought that actually adding this grip might take a bit of use, getting used to, but actually right off the bat, that's really, really very comfortable to use. So they claim it helps with knife safety, repetitive strain injuries, arthritis, and other common kitchen injuries by providing a more secure grip on the knives. I think interestingly, it's quite a good training mechanism for people on how best to hold a knife because it is exactly how I would have held it without the grip. So I think actually as like a almost training guards, almost like stabilizers on a yeah. bike, I think it's a good place for people to start as well as the chefs are doing hours and hours and hours to make it easier. It's really quite comfortable and you don't lose anything in terms of accuracy. I wonder how universal it is on multiple knives. M many, I imagine. Well, there's more of a... Similar, similar. Do you want to take a stab at how much the uh, Evergrip would be? 10 pounds? 9.99. Not too bad. It's uh, $11.99, which is about 9 pounds 42. It, is, it looks I like it's, it's going to last, isn't it? What I like is it was made by somebody in the industry who saw a problem and needed it fixed and this resolved it for them and now it could resolve it for many others. The Dice Vice Evergrip. Is it worth the price or not worth a slice? For me, that's worth the price. I agree. Ebbers is gripped. <laughs> oh. Are we on the up or are we on the way back down? We're getting bigger. Lift the cloche. This feels quality. Woo! I will tell you the story of the ice that met the spirit, embrace it and melt together. I think I know what this is. This is for making the most fancy, pretentious ice cubes you've ever seen in your life. So this is Kidia's clear ice maker, an innovative high quality object capable of finally making your ice transparent with simple water. Leaving the object in the freezer based on your model and temperature for a time of approximately 36 to 48 hours. So ice is difficult to make clear due to air and impurities within the water, often needing to be distilled or boiled first. This tool purifies the water by concentrating the air and impurities present at the bottom, while at the top, these impurities are forced out of the water as it freezes, leaving behind more pure ice. How? It's, it's done by insulating the bottom, ensuring the top freezes first. And those impurities, <laughs> which can make the ice be cloudy or translucent or opaque, also affect the taste. So in a normal ice cube tray, you would just fill up each individual compartment with water, pop it into the freezer. Oh, thanks. <laughs> with the Kidia maker, you fill up the whole container. So that's why there are holes at the bottom. You fill up the whole thing and it will then separate the impurities. It will keep the bottom insulated and it will freeze the top first. It takes a surprising amount of water because of the base section. Now we're getting full. So I'll whack that into the freezer for 36 to 48 hours. Well, look at that. The only issue I see is it does use a lot of room in the freezer. But, More than just your ice cube tray. But I would say if you care about transparent ice cubes. You're gonna That's chuck a sacrifice out. that you're willing to make. Let's see how transparent they are. How are we looking? They are definitely the biggest ice cubes that you can pretty much make at home. It's pretty transparent. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's actually I'm presuming really every bar fingers your ice once you've made it, but. It's really impressive. You take the frosty bit off. Get it out of my eyeball. Then it's transparent. 
How does this work? So, Have you got to heat that up? This is Kidia's Ice Mold. It's a 100% brass flat plate that allows in. the creation of original ice cubes without needing to be heated or powered. Simply place a cube of ice on the plate for a few seconds to imprint the pattern. So the company calls brass a hot metal in reference to its fantastic heat conductivity properties, which is transferred quickly to the ice to allow the quick transfer of the patterns. It is. There, there are seven... These were a bad gift! There are seven different designs on the plate. It's 100% pure brass. A couple of things. I've seen these in bars previously where the, the, the ice tubes are beautiful, mm -hmm. but actually, if I think back, something like a Negroni is made, shaken, and then poured over one of these, and all you really have is one side of the ice cube with that decorative side. So on the instructional video on the website, they actually show all six sides having the design on it. It is really cool. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> so Kidia, it's an Italian brand. Uh, this was started by a group of friends and colleagues uh, who shared a passion for bars and cocktails wanted something a little bit more high-end. Have you also heard of displacement theory, Mike? When you make a drink, do you put the ice in before or after? Well, if you want the decorative thing on the top of the ice not to you dissolve, to float, after. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clever <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, it looks great. So shall we talk price? Why don't we start with the ice maker itself? 35 quid. Yeah, I was gonna say 30. 44 euros, 40 cents, 38 pounds. It feels like a lot, but it does exactly what you want it to do. And I'm still having fun. How about the brass ice mold? This is what takes it to another level, and I imagine the price is also another level. Another 35 pounds, so 70 quid in total. I reckon that's 50 pounds. 180 euros or 154 pounds and a penny. Just, just, just for, for this bit? Just for that bit. Wow, oh, okay. If you are selling cocktails at 20 pound a pop in your nice hotel bar and you've got one of these on the side, then actually it pays for itself in a month. Boys, the Kidia Clear Ice Maker and Ice Mold, is it breaking the mold or are you just not sold? I think it's breaking the mold. This is breaking the mold. It's genius. I want one. Bring on the final gadge! Well, I told you we were going up in size. This is ridiculous. This is taking... But I'm glad we've got the cloche. Us to new heights. Oh! oh, oh. <gasps> Ta-da! Reveal! <laughs> it's a bin. It's a 58 litre bin with bits. With bin liners. <laughs> it's got... No! What? The bin doesn't need a plug. Simple human. <laughs> oh! Ebers! <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen on the lid what this does. It's a voice activated kitchen bin. Lads, this is the Simple Human dual compartment sensor bin. It allows you to easily sort rubbish, recyclables and food scraps in one convenient place, making it a natural, automatic part of the task during cleanup. We've plugged in. You've plugged your bin in. Now just say, open can. And the lid opens automatically, so throwing rubbish away is quick, efficient, and hassle-free. And it shuts itself after a couple of seconds. Unless you then say, stay open whilst performing longer chores or cooking, and the lid won't close until you say, close can. It will also close automatically after 10 minutes in case you forget. Open sesame. No. So that, it's not just noise activated. No. But it, it does say... But it's the word... It does have a motion sensor. And it is, so they say, it is smart enough to adapt to you and the surrounding environment. So no false triggers and no unexpected lid closures. How so does it is do in, that? So in, I'm walking by, but because I've got my shopping, I'm taking it to the fridge. That's not going to open. Well, it's going to open the bin. I don't well, need to open. It hasn't got used to you and your environment yet. So this is a genuine thing I have at home. Heavy chopping board, some waste. Okay, boom, boom, boom. If I just walk up to it, it does open. In. You don't have to talk to it. You don't have to talk don't to it. You don't have to talk to it. So it actually has, Michael, uh, three microphones for voice rec recognition accuracy. If it is battery operated as well, I'd be interested to know how long the batteries run for, because it's not every case that wherever you want your bin in your kitchen design, you're going to have a plug within a reasonable distance. So I am a man who has spent £150 on a bin. It's a really lot, that's a lot of money for yes, a bin. Yes, it's a crappy job. If you don't have a good bin, 
that the liner falls in to the bin or is really difficult to move, it makes a crappy job crappier and messier. And getting an ergonomically friendly, simple to use bin genuinely has improved my life. Well, have a, have a little look inside. You've got dual compartments uh, to make it easy to neatly sort your rubbish and recyclables in one convenient, space efficient place. There is a an inbuilt dispenser for your bin liners inside the bin. Please read what it says on that label. Elevate your trash experience. <laughs> Perfect fit, super and strong. Mike, what I think you'll find is that that is an innovative liner pocket store which dispenses liners from inside the bin for a faster liner change. So it also comes with some handy odorizers to keep your bin smelling nice. They work. My these, bin's got those. Yeah, to be fair, these aren't new, but they are good. All right. It fits, smells good already. It slides in like an ergonomic knife handle. Now, what it, you'll notice it's got the dual compartment. You can also add a third compartment that will sit on the outside as your little food caddy. So for food waste and things, so it's all contained in one easy place. Come with some custom bin liners. And again, as a bougie bin connoisseur, one of the commitments to a bin of this quality yeah. is that it has custom liners that you have to keep rebuying. It looks great as well. Well, that'll be, uh, Mike, because it's got a silver ion coating which resists fingerprints That's... and the spread of germs without dulling the natural sheen and luster of the steel. My kitchen at home has a built-in bin because it fits under the sink with everything else in a small flat. There is no space for something this size. However, I quite like what it does. I kind of want its functionality. I daren't ask about the price. Well, you don't have to. I do. How much do you think it is? I think this is going to be over 200 pounds. If it's 180 pounds, that's ridiculous. But that's my guess. 299 pounds and 95 pence. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Because I'm really not. I, because it's inaccessible to me. If you've got enough money to spend on a bin, it's going to solve all, all your bin problem. And if you can spend 300 pounds on that, Congratulations Good to you. for you. Can you tell us how to run our YouTube channel, please? <laughs> if you're in the position where you can design and create your own perfect kitchen and spending 300 quid in a bin is probably a relatively small part percentage of that big budget. So boys, is this your new favorite thing or should it just get in the bin? <laughs> that is almost not worth saying. <laughs> I don't want to say this, but it is up there with Fancy Ice Cube's my new favourite thing. It's my new favourite thing and it pains me to think I might not ever have one. Right, over to you in the comments. Let us know which of these gadgets would you have in your kitchen and what gadgets should we be testing next?